Yo, what's up guys? This is Afix, and I know it's been a while, but I'm introducing a new tutorial series, the C++ from Zero to Hero. And in the series, I'm planning on teaching you C++ from the very basics so you won't know anything. And then by the end, you should have a fairly good understanding of C++ and be able to apply it in several different areas. So the first thing to know about what you're gonna do is how that thing that you're going to do is going to affect you and how it works. So C++ is an extremely fast coding language that works fairly close uh, to the operating system, especially compared to languages like JavaScript. And over here, I did make a little diagram. Um, C++ is first compiled into bytecode. So you can't just really run it. You first have to compile it. And then after you compile it into this bytecode, you can then run it. And what it does is it basically runs the bytecode that was created from the C++ code that you wrote. Now, uh, C++ has many features. One of the most important is memory management. And memory management um, basically allows you to have complete control over what you're programming, but it does have its downsides. For instance, you might have things like memory leaks and you have to handle all of that yourself. There's also the benefits of speed and better speed is just, just nicer and you can use it for more daunting tasks and you know, just it's speedy. And there's object oriented programming and this means that you can use classes in C++ and what this allows you to do is kind of instantiate different base things and these are called objects and we'll get into that a little bit later um, but it basically allows you to have like a little template and you can create things off of that template and they have the same behavior now that's the intro for c plus plus and now let's set it up locally so i am running an instance of the ubuntu operating system and you can be on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, or anything, and this should still work. And I'm gonna cover different ways you can kind of compile and run your code. So I know most people watching this will be using Microsoft, and there is a tool called Visual Studio, and it basically allows you to create C++ code, and it'll debug it, build it, you can do all of that just from Visual Studio, which is really, really powerful. Um, sadly, if you're on any other operating system, you're stuck with Visual Studio Code, which is good, but it's not comparable since it's a text editor and Visual Studio is an IDE. So if you're on something like Linux or Mac OS, or if you're on Windows and you don't want to use Visual Studio, you can use this IDE called Eclipse. And Eclipse has support for Java and C++, and I believe it comes with a compiler, so when you run your code, it'll just automatically compile it for you and then run it. Um, but for this first tutorial, I am going to be using a different method. Um, what you guys can do is you can create an Eclipse project or Visual Studio project and run and write the same code, but I'm going to do it a different way and maybe you guys will want to do it too. So before we start, I'm going to open an instance of the terminal and I'm going to simply make a directory um, in my desktop and I'm just gonna call this C++ CPP Tuts, and I'm going to CD into CPP Tuts. And basically what I'm going to do here is I am going to make a directory called video one, video underscore one, and I'm going to CD into that directory. And once you are in that directory, you can open an instance of Visual Studio Code, or you can use any text editor you want, Vim, um, or really whatever you want, and just create a file called main.cpp. Uh, for the purposes of this first lesson, I'm going to be using Vim since it's just really easy to get already. So I'm going to do Vim main.cpp, and for me, this will create a C++ file. Now you'll see things called .h files, and you can basically consider it the same as CPP files for now. We're going to cover the differences later on. So once you have created that file and opened it up in your text editor, what you're going to want to do is write these lines of code. So first there is hashtag include IOStream 
And the reason why we're doing this is because C++ by default has nothing imported, meaning that you basically have a bare program and you could use maybe like the primitives and um, just the complete basics of C++, um, but you can't even like print things to the screen. So what we need to do is include a library in the standard template library that will help us. And this one is called IO stream for input output stream, which allows us to take input from users or output things to the standard output. So now we are going to do a step that a lot of people don't like, and this is using namespace STD. And STD stands for standard. Um, and what this basically does is it imports a namespace for us, but a lot of programmers like just calling functions with two colons like this. And the reason why they do this is because it allows for better separation and we'll cover this in the future once you've got all the basics down. So we are going to just type this, I will explain it afterwards, int main and then do two parentheses and do angular brackets. Now what this is doing is declaring something called a function that returns an integer. And I know this is probably really confusing for you at this point, especially if you're a complete beginner. So just ignore it for now. And once we get to the video where we cover functions, it'll make much more sense. Now we are going to use the command cout and we are going to do two of these less than signs, hello world. And put that exclamation mark at the end and end that with a semicolon. Note in C++, you have to end almost every line with a semicolon. You can see we're not ending the function with the semicolon as that will give us an error. But because this is a transaction or an operator, what we're going to do is use this semicolon to end it off. And what this allows us to do is we can basically do multi-line things because C++ knows where our program ends. And we are not going to do any multi-line things in this video, but in the future we will. So over here, we are doing something called um, writing. So what we're doing are, is we are writing to the C out, and that's basically in our case, the standard output. Um, and you'll see what I mean in a second. Standard output is basically just where um, all the output goes. And what this does is it simply writes hello world to that standard output so the user can see it. Now let's run our code. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to open up a terminal. So make sure your terminal is opened up in the same directory as your main.cpp file. And what you're going to do is type in G plus plus. And what we're going to do is dash O main and include the file main.cpp, click enter. And what this does is it calls the G plus plus command and the dash O flag it makes this output bytecode called main. So if we do a simple LS here to see all our files, we can see that there is main and main CPP. And if we describe main, you can see that it's not text like main CPP is. So what we are going to do now is simply run dot slash main. And what dot slash does is it runs main in the current directory. So it'll call desktop slash cpp touch slash video one slash main. And we're going to click enter and you can see our hello world is printed to the screen, which is really awesome. Now, what this is doing is it's basically running the bytecode that we have previously compiled from main c.cpp into the main bytecode file. So that's it for today's video. In the next video, we are going to probably explain primitives and variables, and we're gonna slowly work our way up and finally understand every single part of this code. If you have any questions, please feel free to join the Discord. Also, if you wanna hang out, you can join the Discord community. If you have any questions also, feel free to write in the comments. If you have any points of criticism, feel free to write in the comments. See you next time and thank you for watching.